naive base. I'll talk about naive base now. The naive base classifier. So I assume that you know a bit of probability and what does it mean, the probability of one event given another one. So the conditional probability. Um, along with, decision, with uh, decision trees, neural networks, and nearest neighbors, one of the most practical learning methods is naive base classifier. Is the naive base classifier. This, um, in many ways, there are better algorithms than this, but this is a seminal algorithm from which a lot of other algorithms stem from. And that has made it an algorithm that a lot of people compare their new algorithms to. And on top of that, it's not so bad. It's a, it actually performs fairly well for many tasks. When do you want to use this? Well, when you have moderate to large training set available, uh, when you have attributes that describe instances that are conditionally independent given the classification. So when you have examples where the, the feature set of, of those examples, so say for example, has diagnosed it, the, the diagnosis of a, di of a disease. Well, when you have symptoms that are apparently on the surface independent from each other, um, Again, successful applications of the diagnosis and also the classification of text documents, which we'll see in a different video. So let's talk about the naive base classifier really quickly as a generic uh, problem. Assume there is a target function that goes from a set of examples near x to, to some value p, where each, where each instance little x is described by attributes a1, a2, up until an. So for example, um, whether there's a, a symptoms that, that describe a disease, given that you have a bunch, you've seen a bunch of patients, those would be the examples, right? So there's a function that having seen a bunch of patients can produce the corresponding values. So having seen a bunch of patients can produce the corresponding sequence of, you know, patient 1 has the flu, patient 2 doesn't, patient 3 has the flu, patient 4 has the flu, patient 5 doesn't have the flu, and so on and so forth, if your function is based on examples, classify whether people have the flu or not. Now, each of those instances, each, of each patient, okay, is described by attributes, for example, has chills, has a fever, has headaches, and on and so forth. Those are the attributes. And then the most probable value of this function, okay, given that example, is, we call it the, the most probable value, is the argmax of the probability of seeing the, what, the value given a lot of attributes. So for example, the probability of whether this person has the flu or not is the probability is the the, the, the maximum between the argmax of uh, value j doesn't have the flu given all these attributes and value uh, j plus one which is the person doesn't have the flu and it has all these attributes so again is the maximum between the probability of the person having the flu with the symptoms or not having the flu with the given symptoms. Okay, whichever whichever is higher, that's what we will think uh, the most probable value of x for f of x is. Now, doing some math, because this is Bayesian, uh, this is conditional probability, we can use Bayesian rule, which says basically flip this one over to here and the vj over to here times the probability of vj divided by the probability of this side which is what we have here. Now, it doesn't matter which value, whether the patient has the flu or not, or whether whatever you want to classify. It doesn't matter how we vary the value. The bottom part here doesn't change at all, okay? The denominator doesn't change. Therefore, we can treat it as a constant. And the, the argmax, the argument that's going to maximize this thing, is the same argument that's going to maximize just the numerator, the, the upper part. Okay, so we'll just we'll just conduct the calculations with the upper part. That's the probability of a1, a2 up until an given the value times the probability of the value. Okay, 
So we try each value of plus blue doesn't have blue with all the attributes of the new patient, and we see what which one comes up higher. The one that comes up higher, well, that's the value that we will pick. <clears throat> so some assumptions, we assume that the probability of one event given two others is independent, uh, probability of uh, A and B are independent, so therefore the probability of A given events B and C is basically the probability of A given C because A is independent of B, right? And again, the probability of A and B occurring given C is the probability of A occurring given C times the probability of B occurring given C because, you know, A and B are independent. And this is interesting because it resembles the symptoms and the value, right? So we can generalize that the probability of all these attributes given a value, it's actually the production of, or the multiplication of the probability of each attribute given that value. Okay, just like here, the probability of attribute A and B given the value C is the probability of attribute A given C times the probability of attribute B given C. When we generalize, we get this. Okay, which gives us the naive base classifier, which is basically the argmax of going through all the possible values, computing this, this formula here, the probability of the value times the production of the probability of each attribute given that value. So now, here's the algorithm very quickly, a naive base learner. Basically, what you do is you, uh, for each target value, you sub j, so has the flu, doesn't have the flu, or any other, you know, many classifications. So, uh, uh, has the flu, has the common cold, doesn't have anything. For any target value vj, for each target value vj, we will estimate the probability of vj given the data. This is, how do you estimate the probability of vj or, or value given the data? Well, you just count. Here it is, right? So you just count. Um, let's see if I can do this. Here. You just count how many examples do you have with that value divided by the count of all the examples there are. Okay. Now, for each attribute value a sub i of each attribute a, you will estimate the probability of that attribute given that value. Okay, estimate the probability of that attribute given that value, which is basically just count again, whoops, just count how many cases have attribute A set to something with that value divided by, by the total number of, of um, examples with that value. So for example, if one of my attributes is um, has a fever, well, how and, and I want to know the probability of, of having a fever given that the person has the flu, what I will do is I will count all the cases where I have fever equals yes and flu equals yes divided by all the cases where I have flu equals yes. That would be how I estimate each one of these things. And, th and I do that for each attribute, or for each value uh, of, the, of the target attribute. So by the way, this, this two here is not squared. It's just this node kind of thing. OK, so let's look at an, an example. Given all the previous, oh, and by the way, I'm sorry. This is how you train. Then. The way you classify is you just compute the argmax of, of, of this equation because you will have all the values for this and this. So you just plug in the values and see which V gives you the highest 